Polly dreams of being a princess bride for her Prince Sean. He's just so handsome. But family drama is putting a little too much reality into this fairy tale wedding. You won't come to my wedding? You are an Goodness me. Jane Day is hinged the evil Knievel of all things wedding is no stranger to danger. It's like trying to bring peace in the Middle East. But this time, can Jane put out the fires before the family implodes? <laughs> that was one of life's experiences, which I don't want to do again, thank you. Polly. Stop. Pretty high strung, huh? We've got this to do, we've got that to do. It does add more stress. It wasn't always that way. Once upon a time, Polly was a sweet, sweet girl who was looking for a super sweet guy. He's just so handsome. Aww. I saw her from across the room at, uh, at a friend of mine's party, and there's just something special about her. Aw, the perfect fairy tale couple. And so much so that the bride gets all princess at every chance she gets. He would come home from work during the summer holidays and he would find me with a tiara on my head and in a full ball gown doing the house cleaning. But Polly can't dust away this kind of stress. With only 10 days before the wedding, Cinderella isn't too worried about a shoe fitting, more like the dress. It didn't fit when I bought it. The last time I fitted it on at Christmas, it, it didn't fit still. I just can't get it up any further. It was perfect, but when I tried it on, um, the zipper didn't go up. <laughs> it was but the perfect isn't dress. isn't part of being perfect that it fits? <laughs> I mean... uh, you think, Sean? And if that isn't enough dress to stress, Polly's worried mom won't be a mother of a bride fit for a princess. The only family I have at my wedding is my mom. It's so important that my mom looks fantastic. But Polly hasn't seen the dress yet, and she's worried. For good reason. My mom ordered her dress through a catalog. Uh, it said Mother of the Bride on the page, uh, so she just figured it was perfect. Hope you like Periwinkle, Polly. From... Yeah, we weren't going to be that couple that yeah. left everything to last minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wrinkle in this fairy tale is that you are that couple. The list is, is huge. Huge list equals massive stress. And even mom's driving her crazy. Dad, where's the caretaker in this place? And then there's dad. My dad has distanced himself from us, and my sister and I don't get along. So all I have is my mom, and that hurts. It would mean a lot for Polly if her dad could make it to the wedding. I know it would uh, you know, make her day even that more special. So the stress is contagious, and this wedding is coming full throttle. And the problems just don't stop. Now, we never thought that we'd be in this situation. Well, you're in luck, starstruck lovers, because Jane Deus Hinch is your own fairy godmother. She and her assistant, Michael, are here to stop this fairy tale wedding from becoming a brother's grim affair. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm Jane. Hi, Jane. Nice to meet you, Sean. I'm Sean. Polly. Hello, Polly. Hi. I got your wedding SOS. That's wonderful. <laughs> so this is for your wedding day? This is for the ceremony? Well, we're going to have cocktails and entertainment out here. Oh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. The ceremony and the meal are going to be in, inside the sanctuary. I've got to see this church okay. where they're going to make it into a restaurant afterwards. Okay. This I have to say. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> At least Polly and Sean have the venue figured out. As for the rest of their party plans, looks like these lovebirds were asleep at the wheel when they should have been prepping for a wedding. Now, tell me all the problems that you've got that I need to help you solve. Where do we start? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have centerpieces, decoration to go in the church, no pubos, aisles, any entertainment, any flowers, rentals, caterer, the menu, nothing. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> oh, no. Well, oh, no, not the dress. Yes, the dress. Nothing booked, nothing paid. Um, my dress doesn't even fit. How many days is it to your wedding? 10, 10, 11, 11. Yeah, we haven't really counted yet. Does somebody else do maths around here? I think I'd be counting. Yes. There's all this nervous laughter and it seems as though they're fine. But behind all of this, there's tears. 
Now, what about parents? What about family? What's their involvement? My dad has not RSVP'd, uh, nor has my sister, and I don't have any family coming over from England. And you've brought in a British wedding planner to come and sort all this mess out. I think at the moment, Polly and Sean are in fantasy world. They're so in love, they're so happy. This is their wedding day. Of course it'll all happen. It won't. I want to see now that we can resolve this. And the only way I can do that is to go away and put a plan together and say, do you realize what we've got to do? This ship is sinking and everyone's going down with it. I like a challenge. So Jane gets the ball rolling with a wedding manifesto. Holly, Sean, it's 10 days to your wedding. There is so much to do. And this is the plan of how we're going to do it. This is Polly going to do it. This is Sean going to do it. It's a very full board. Kind of shocking. <laughs> so who is going to organise the transportation for where to park? The programmes. Organising an attendant and sorting out the parking. Seating plan for the church. Your meter, greeter, seater. The flowers, the pew bows, the runner, everything to do with the setting up of the church. To get the programmes, the order of service together. Are you having linen napkins? Are you having paper napkins? Have you seen the crockery, the cutlery, the glassware? How do you feel looking at that? Overwhelmed. Stressed out. Yeah. Pardon? Stressed out. Yeah. What was that? Stressed out. Yeah. Oh, you're stressed. I feel as though I've, you know, thrown a bucket of water over you going, <laughs> as you know, I'm a fairy godmother. I can grant you three wishes. Only three? Only three. Oh. <laughs> this is not funny. This is serious. Failure is not an option. We're in trouble. Yeah. But I'm glad we have Jane on our side. Yeah. And I think Jane I'm smiling because I'm, I'm confident that Jane will help us get out of this mess. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that a couple have got themselves into such a mess. All right. We'll get there. It's only seven days until Polly and Sean tie the knot. And fairy godmother Jane Deus Hinch is here to unravel their problems with three wishes. They could have the biggest wake-up call ever. And Polly's dress has her feeling the squeeze. And to make matters even worse, she's about to see Mom's catalog dress for the first time. Oh! So this is it? This is it. Do you like it? Truly shocked that that's what she chose. It, uh, it looked like a big blue rectangle. It looks comfortable. Yeah, comfortable, like a pair of clogs. But would you wear those to a wedding? That's not what I was picturing at all. But sweet Polly can't get up the nerve to tell mom how she really feels. So she gives Jane a call. Um, listen, I just saw my mom's dress and it's, it's really bad. It's hard to tell my mom about her dress. She hasn't found anything better, so that's what she's gonna wear. She's settling with it. Well, Jane, would it be possible to go shopping with my mom? Right. and help her find something that's a bit more flattering on her. How will your mum feel when I go, hello, your daughter doesn't like your outfit for the wedding. Would you like another one? Can we make it a wish and we'll sit down, we'll talk to my mum and we'll go shopping. So Jane has devised a plan to have Winnie looking winsome without too many hard feelings. Win needs a new dress. And I know how to break the news to her. Every mother of the bride needs to wear a hat. And oops, just need a new outfit to go with it. Mom, Jean's here. Are you almost done? Yes, I am. Just give me a minute. Well, this is it. Is it that bad? Oh, I think so. Hello. This is the periwinkle this creation. This is the periwinkle dress. And what's wrong with it? <laughs> well, it's, um... Hmm, I see. I think that Polly has got this picture of you walking her down the aisle in something completely different. I know you love this because she's told me that you love this. I do, I do. Wynne is such a nice lady. 
but when she walked out in that outfit, goodness me, what was she thinking? What are we thinking to the colour? I like the colour. We like the colour, it's just... It's a bit long and it's a bit too much fabric. Yeah. The shape is kind of... Yeah. ...missing. I see what I do see what she's saying. I think as mother of the bride, if you were a guest, it would be perfect. But as mother of the bride, you are so special. You are setting the scene for the day. Now, she tells me you're a Brit. Yes, I am. Yes. What do all Brits love to do at weddings? Wear a hat. <laughs> to have a hat. Yeah, but you should I'm... see the hat my sister sent me. <laughs> she sent you a hat? She sent me oh, a hat. Mom, I've got it right here. <laughs> this was the hat. I told her my dress was periwinkle, and she said, oh, fine. She said, all the dress hats are out now for Ascot. But this, this, this is, this is a young girl's pretty thing. No, Mother of the Bride would be a hat. So, do we need an excuse to go buy hats? Sounds wonderful. Shall we go hat shopping? Let's do it. We'll start with a hat and we'll get an outfit. Jane works wonders. She's amazing. <laughs> Jane's pulled some royal strings to make Winnie feel special. So it's a selection fit for a queen. Champagne, limo and shopping. Meanwhile, not to be outdone by the ladies, Michael's on his own mission to inject some metrosexual into the suburban groomsmen. I need two tuxedos that are gonna make these guys look very sexy and very hot for Sean's wedding day. Hot, hot, hot. Gentlemen, get changed, get naked, let's go. All right, boys, let me see what you got. Fabulous. Sean, you look absolutely, let's do a little twirl. Uh, remember, Michael, wedding, not Chippendale show. Very cute, very cute. Ah, back to civility. A cup of tea and a taste of home. There we are. It's as though we're at home. Oh, boy, that hits the spot. It does hit the spot. So Jane has hit the spot, but Sean has missed the mark with his transportation solution. Taxi! Oh, we're going from the church to where you are. It was like less than two minutes. Yeah, you don't take a cab on your wedding day. I don't, I don't get it. And as if the taxi versus limo tiff isn't causing enough tension, Dad is still MIA on the RSVP list. Still no acceptance from him. He's not on there yet? No. It would mean so much to see my dad at my wedding. It, it, it shows that Sean and I are truly ready to move on with our lives. We're ready for that fresh beginning. But Polly needs a little help raising the white flag. So your second wish is that you want your father to come to the wedding? I don't know how I'm going to do that. Just give him a hug. Oh. Oh. Serious. It's only two days before the wedding, and Jane has her next wish. Wasting no time, she finds the father's lair. I'm going to go and knock on the door of Polly's father. The reason I'm going to do this, this isn't something I've ever done before, but it is so important to Polly that if she hasn't got her father there on her wedding day, I think it'll cast such a shadow. So, Jane takes a leap of faith. After being pushed out of the door, um, I felt as though he gave up. He didn't even want to speak. He would not even have a two-minute conversation with me. What will it take for you to be there? I got nothing, absolutely nothing. The only shred of hope that he has offered me is that he will accept if Polly knocks on the door. He wants her to knock on the door, not me. With the wedding only two days away, Polly and Sean have barely buttoned down details, let alone buttoned up Polly's dress. I just can't get it up any further. All this, plus serious family drama. That's not what I was picturing at all. So they've SOS celebrity wedding planner Jane Deus Hinge, who's here to grant them three wishes to save their wedding. I can't believe that a couple have got themselves into such a mess. 
and the first wish to clean it up was to break the news to mom about her dreary duds. But perfection is fleeting because some bad news has sedate Sean seething. So you're not going to be able to MC the wedding? Yeah, okay, maybe not. But still, they've got to find somebody who can host their big day. Yeah, wait till I tell Polly this one. Good thing they kept their third wish handy. In true blasé Sean form, he calls Polly, Polly calls Michael, Michael calls Jane, and Jane calls Polly. Would it be possible, Jane, for you to MC our wedding? And this is your wish. Oscar, I'm going to be MC at the wedding. Now, on top of everything else, I've got to go and MC this wedding. My goodness, what a mess. But Jane puts that fire on the back burner because she's still got wish two to contend with. Polly wants her dad at the wedding, but she's got to meet him halfway. To try and make this wish come true, I asked him if he would come to the wedding. He felt as though he hadn't been properly invited. He felt it was a generic invitation. When I said, what will it take for you to be there? He said, if she will come and ask me, then yes. Well, to be honest, Jean, I'm, I'm pleased with the news, but I'm disappointed at the same time. I've sent him an invitation. I called him, no word. You know, family is definitely very important, especially at an occasion like a wedding. You could actually have closure if you wanted to before your wedding day. And if at the end of that meeting he says no, well, at least you can walk down the aisle and know you tried everything. Jane, we just don't have time. We've seen the list together. We know that our time is very valuable. I've taken the steps to invite him to the wedding. And if he's going to play games? No, I don't think he's playing games. I really don't. Have the meeting, and then you can move on in your marriage. Yeah. Are you willing to meet? Mm -hmm. So with only one day to go, the rudderless wedding party tries to forge ahead without the distracted couple. We're, we don't have anything to do because the stuff isn't here. We're, we're short on Polly. <laughs> so to persuade bullheaded dad to come to the wedding, Jane makes another trip, and this time with Ammo, neglected daughter and her husband-to-be. Why is he being so stubborn? Hello? Sean? Hi, Peter. Okay. No, come, come on over. What? Come on over. Come on in. Uh, Peter, what's the problem? Just come on in. No problem. Oh, honestly, we've come out all this way. Yeah? We've sent you an invitation to our wedding, and we're getting all this <laughs> Peter, I really don't get this. I really don't get okay, this. What is the problem? You won't come to my wedding? You don't communicate with me? You don't send me... Christmas cards? I'm the one who calls you on your oh, birthday? Wait, wait. You are an oh. You are. You truly, truly are, and I've oh, okay, okay. extended the olive branch to oh, you right now. Sorry, and this is your chance to accept it. Okay. You should be at the wedding. No, I don't think I will. Okay. I'm ready to go. No, I don't think I will. I don't. Can you tell me why? That's just bad enough for me. And that's all I get. Yeah, have a good day, then. Still have to do it. <laughs> it's such a waste of our time. I've had some challenges in my life, but I've never been a mediator, a diplomat, a family counselor, and everything else rolled into one. And tonight, I've had to be everything. Polly and Sean's big day is here. Oh, it's very hectic. They've asked Jane Deus Hinch for three wishes, and so far, she's granted two. Mom's dress is A-list, and at the last minute, Jane has agreed to MC their wedding. You want me to be your MC? But there's no telling if her efforts behind the scenes have swayed Dad to show his face. He should be there. He's my father. But this is no time for sentimentality, even though it's, you know, a wedding. We have got so much to do at this wedding. But Jane is feeling sentimental and just can't help throwing more fairy godmother dust around. So Candyman Michael is assigned to the groomsmen. Get it, get it, get it. Okay, guys, you look fabulous. I'm out the door. I'll see you in a bit. You gotta make sure you're there. You have your jobs. I gotta go. Okay, bye. Gotta go. The boys are looking, uh, pastel-y. 
But what about Polly? Over the past 10 days, she's been working it to fit in her dress. And the moment of truth has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> Holly's relief may be short-lived because at this late hour, there's still no sign of distant dad. But the show must go on with or without him. I'd be extremely hurt if he didn't show up. Now, after all that heartache, I really hope that Polly's dad can find it in his heart to come to this wedding. But this wedding has been in holding pattern long enough. But then, look who shows up just in the nick of time. To everyone's surprise, Dad's had a last-minute change of heart. The last time I saw Polly's dad, it was like trying to bring peace in the Middle East. And to think that he's here today does my heart good. With the stage finally set, Polly joins Sean at the altar. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, till death do us part. Sean, will you give yourself to Polly to be your husband? I will. And Polly, will you give yourself to Sean to be his wife? I will. So vows have been exchanged, and Peacemaker Jane has brought the whole family together. It's wonderful to have family at your wedding. Yeah. It means a lot. She's happy. That's, that's all I care about. Sean and I are truly ready to move on with our lives. We're ready for that fresh beginning. And then Jane goes outside to meet the Brits. I am genuinely delighted that you're here. It was a nightmare for me at the beginning when Polly said she wanted to get married because all I could think of was it would just be me at the wedding, me and Polly, nobody else. And I was so delighted that Peter was able to come and, and show true spirit. And we've had a lovely day. She looked beautiful. Our daughter looked lovely, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, she did. She looked very nice indeed. So you pulled it off for us, Jane. Thank you so much. Welcome to Polly and Sean's wedding. Getting Polly's dad to the wedding was mission nearly impossible. But luckily, the third wish to MC this shindig is right up Jane's alley. My name is Jane Dose Hinch, and I am Sean and Polly's wedding planner. Your bride and bridegroom. I actually love MCing. Of course, I'm doing it British style. Hip, hip. I think Polly and Sean have had the most wonderful, wonderful wedding day. We're really thankful to Jane that she was able to pull, pull everything together, all the wishes off. That's wonderful. And we're all here today. Yeah. And we had a wonderful day, beautiful wedding. We couldn't have done it without Jane. She looked gorgeous. Yeah. It's a bit of competition at some time. She's know. that good looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my dad came, and yeah. he really surprisingly special. had a fantastic time. and. I think he was very moved by it all. Jane, I've got to thank you so much for it all. The wish for Peter to be here was one of the, well, I think it is the hardest wish I've ever had to grant. I never, ever thought I could pull that off. And to top it all off, Polly's dad is helping them build their life together. Thank you. He's giving us the money to help us towards buying our first house. We had every heartstring pulled. <laughs> That's the sound we know and love. Oh, not a drop spilt. I got it. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I thought we were. I thought we were cut. Sorry. 